In the last video, we were introduced to this Husqvarna mower, and after inspecting it, we found out that it does work, but we're going to need to invest some money in parts to get it working the way it's supposed to. I then had to decide to either buy only the parts I needed or buy the whole assembly. Here in a minute, you'll see what I chose. In today's project, we look at this Husqvarna mower, and the problem is that I had to make a choice as to which parts I was going to order. By the way, if you didn't see the previous video of this series, there should be a link at the top right that will catch you up on this project. The issue wasn't just cost, because no one wants to pay for the most expensive option. Instead, it's which one made more sense, and I hate to say it, but some of you may not like the choice I made. Now, I'm going to try and repair this mower, however, it may not be the exact repair you need to make to yours. We'll explore other options later in the video. Now, we're only going to mention what these other options could be. We don't have enough time to look into them, but if you need more information on these options, you're welcome to ask as many questions as you need to. For those of you who don't know what's going on, I'll briefly explain the situation. So we found out that when you pull on the rope, it wasn't engaging the engine, which means you couldn't do a test start to see if the mower was even worth saving. I got around that issue by using my drill on the flywheel nut to spin the engine, and fortunately it started and ran for a while until my rope I was using to hold the brake handle down came undone. At least we were able to figure out that the engine does work and that we just had to decide if we were only going to replace the parts that were missing from the recoil or replace the entire assembly. The issue for me was that the retaining clip and the pawls weren't that expensive at all and buying them would have made monetary sense. The real issue for me was how they got lost in the first place. Since they were forced out of the housing while under stress, which then released the retaining clip, the area where they were sitting could be damaged and I just can't see it. So for me, I didn't want to chance it, so I decided to buy the whole assembly instead. I found this one online, and it wasn't the cheapest, but at only $28 to my door, I wasn't going to complain too much. And since I bought the assembly, I don't have to worry about fitting the new parts to it, or if it's going to work with the aftermarket parts. Yes, it was more expensive, but on the off chance that there is a fitment problem, I would have wasted my time and money, and I'm sure a couple of swear words would have been used as well. So for me, it was the better option. I'm not saying you should always buy the assembly, but sometimes it just makes sense. All I have to do is remove the original recoil assembly and then install this one. I do want to do one thing to help this from happening again. First, I want to replace that missing bolt that holds the recoil to the engine, and then I want to apply thread locker to each one of the fasteners. Now, I didn't order the OEM fastener, and that's because they wanted an arm and a leg for one tiny bolt. So instead, I went to the hardware store and picked up a regular bolt. Now, thread locker should keep all the fasteners from coming loose, and it should hold for the next few years. Once the recoil is back on the engine, I'll then replace the top cover, but I was having a hard time getting it to sit down in the front, so I had to remove the inner piece to help get it installed. I should have cleaned the dirt in this area, but I'll get to it later on when I'm not filming. If I can find a replacement sticker for this part, I'd like to replace it, but if it's too expensive, I won't bother. At this point, I want to give it a couple of slow pulls to make sure it's working like it should. Well, I hate to say it, but I was not trying to start the engine. I was just slowly pulling on the rope to see how well the new recoil was working. Now, it was smoking a lot at the beginning, but after a minute or so, it stopped. Typically, what happens is when I put the mower on the table, the front of the mower will sometimes tip down, and that causes a lot of the oil to wash against the piston. Some of that oil will make it past the rings and gets burned up in the combustion process. I'll start it again later on at the end of the video, and we'll see if it does it again. Now that I know the recoil works like it should and the engine starts and runs along with the self-propel, I think it's time to get this thing ready for the mowing season, either for my own yard or someone else's. The first thing I want to do is to sharpen the blade. This will make the cut look a lot better and also allow the engine to not work as hard. Another way to make the engine not work as hard is to lubricate the moving parts on the self-propel system. I'm sure this is probably the first time this has been done on this mower, so it should free up some power that the blade could use. 
I also want to do the same to each wheel and taking each one off is the best way but it's not necessary. It does give me an opportunity to clean and lubricate the drive gears though. Judging by the amount of grass that was inside this mower, it was used quite a bit without any sort of cleaning. I will say this, the fact that it's gone this long without maintenance is pretty good. This may not be a commercial unit but it lasted quite a long time even for residential use. With this wheel lubricated, I just have to do the others. I can't measure the amount of power that was being lost through the drive system before lubrication, but it makes sense that it couldn't hurt either. I would only do this once a year because I can't prove its effectiveness, but at least it feels easier to push than before we lubricated it. There's also something strange with this side of the handlebar. It seems to be loose and I can't get it any tighter, which makes the mower kind of tough to push around. After taking the nut off, I found out it's not even the correct thread, and that's why I couldn't turn it. The nut also tried to cross-thread the bolt, which I might have to fix. I also can't turn the plastic knob, so I'll have to take this part to the table so I can take it apart. If I have to, I'll replace the bolt with a standard bolt from a different machine, but I'm going to try and save this one. The first thing is to grab a hold of the bolt so I can loosen the plastic knob. Unfortunately, it looks like I'm going to need some more leverage because it's really stuck, so I hope it's not cross-threaded. After getting some more leverage, it finally broke free. Unfortunately, I tried to reuse the original bolt, but I wasn't having any luck, so I ended up using the other bolt instead, which worked out way better than expected. Once I got it tight, it's a lot sturdier than before, and after that, I'll reattach the upper handle to it. One of the last things I want to do is to secure this plastic part with the Husqvarna logo on it. Now I'm not certain because I've never taken one of these apart, but I suspect this cover should be secured to the larger piece with two screws. If not, there are four tabs that will hold it to it. Unfortunately, the lower part is broken, so it's not going to stay put. Since I don't want to remove the larger plastic part, and since this is my mower, I'm going to secure this part with one screw near the top. I know this is not the best way, but since the bottom cover is already broken, one extra hole isn't going to hurt it. The very last thing to do before we try and start it to see if it's going to smoke again is to lubricate the cables. This is a very simple way to ensure they're going to continue working year after year. If you feel that this is unnecessary and you've never had to do this, then count yourself as lucky. Once the cables have been lubricated, we'll try and start it. So as you just saw, there wasn't any smoke from the muffler, which means the reason it was smoking the last time was simply a handling issue where the oil was able to get past the rings. The self propel seems to be working very well, and overall this mower was a fantastic find, and the only real investment was a new recoil. Another option would of course been to find a parts mower and use its recoil or even piece one together from different mowers, but the chances of success would have been a lot less, at least in my book. So in the end, I spent about four hours fixing and filming this repair in the course of two days. It would have been a lot faster if I didn't have to film. For an investment of only $28 and some of my time, I think we saved a fantastic mower from the scrapyard, but it could have easily been a lot worse. I'm not saying you should always go the easy route and just buy the assembly, but I would always suggest you use your own good judgment instead. So my question is, did I make a mistake paying twice as much in parts for the assembly versus just buying the parts I needed. With the price of stuff increasing every day, I didn't want to risk wasting my time in buying the individual parts only to find out that they weren't going to work out, and then I'd have to buy the assembly instead. But I would totally understand if you only bought the parts. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.